I want to welcome everyone to the Q&A session for our upcoming course, Deepening into the Radiant Lotus Qigong Path for Women, the nine-week advanced training for greater self-healing, self-care, and empowerment. I'm Lisa Bonis, and it's my honor to be hosting this Q&A conversation for the Shift Network, where we'll explore the teachings of Daisy Lee and address questions about her upcoming nine-week course. Again, that's called Deepening into the Radiant Lotus Qigong Path for Women, which begins Wednesday, January 30th. Later, I'll explain how we can, you can participate in this course, even if you can't attend the live sessions. But first, I want to introduce our guest. Daisy Lee is a respected leader in the Qigong world with more than 20 years of teaching experience. She's certified as a Level 3 Advanced Qigong Instructor and Clinical Practitioner by the National Qigong Association of America, as well as being a past board member of the International Qigong Science Association in Beijing. She lectures and conducts workshops and instructor trainings internationally with a specialty in women's health. Her signature program, Radiant Lotus Qigong, is now taught in 13 countries. Her accompanying DVD series, Beginner Qigong for Women 1 and 2, and Qigong for Women became bestsellers within the first month of their release. And in just a few minutes, we're going to open up for your questions. But first, I want to welcome Daisy, who will begin our call by leading us in an opening meditation. Welcome, Daisy. It's so great to see you again today. It's great to see you too, Lisa and everyone. Thank you so much for having me again. Uh, I would like to lead with a vertical alignment exercise as well as the Guan Yin opening movement. So I'm just going to step back a few paces and uh, you can follow along with me. So we go first into vertical alignment. And that means that the feet in your mind's eye are grounded deeply to the earth's core, connected through the kidney points or the yang chuan points at the bottoms of the feet. And seeing the energy roots go deep into the earth and connecting with the heart of the earth. It's simply a visualization, but it helps us to connect to the earth that we stand on. And allow this loving, compassionate energy to flow upwards through the feet, into the legs, stabilizing and grounding the energy to the center of the earth and through your own body, rising up the energy as light expands through the lower Dantian. And see that light gently flow upwards, clearing everything in its path and flowing and glowing at the heart center like a lotus opening its petals to the sun. Continue rising this light up into the throat center so that you can speak your authentic truth and see the light expand and radiate there and upwards to the third eye at this point between the brows interior and open the mind to new thoughts and inspiration. From there we go out through the top of the head, through the byway point at the top of the head to a star in the sky. And that star represents your highest self. It's like a soul star emanating your authentic truth and your light. From the point of that star, we come downwards back again in heart shape as the light surrounds the body, goes underneath the feet and back to the earth, but rises back up, out through the arms into a ball of light at the lower Dantian. And here we start what is called the Guan Yin opening movement. Often you see it in my practice as the closing movement, but it can also be done as an opening movement. So just as the palms face each other in this ball of light, we expand and open up this light, inhaling the earth's nurturing energy. And at the shoulder height, just simply turn the palms up and connect to the yang chi above in the sky and from the environment. 
palms face each other in the prayer position and draw the light of both directions down through the midline into the heart center. And here, we'll just take a moment to bless all of life, to give gratitude for all that we have and all that we are, and to support us as we continue on this path of learning and growth and expansion and yet at the same time consolidating this knowledge to create wisdom so that we may benefit our own health but also the health of all those around us just by our example. From this point of light, emanating this light out into the world and yet bringing it back into our heart and soul into the flame of our palms, back inside our bodies. We then honor the earth as the palms come down, open up the palms flat over the body, forming this diamond of light at the Dantian. The backs of the fingers come together. We rise the energy up back into the heart center, offering all of who we are into the world to serve the greatest good. Rise up together, turn the hands around, and send healing light into the earth. And at the end, however many times you feel is needed, sending light to the earth, crisscross one palm over the other, come back in to the lower Dantian, and gently draw upwards from the perineum back up to the heart and relax all the joints, whole body relaxed, so that we can begin by answering any questions that you might have. All right. All right. <laughs> Hello <Okay>. again. <laughs> all right, thank you, Daisy. You're uh, now we have the rest of our time together to dive into our viewers' questions for Daisy as we prepare for her upcoming course. Again, that's called Deepening into the Radiant Lotus Qigong Path for Women which begins Wednesday, January 30th. And if you want to check out the website and learn more about the nine-week course, you can visit qigongforwomentraining.com, and we're spelling qigong, Q-I-G-O-N-G, for womentraining.com. And that's where you'll see the full description, and you can register if you'd like. So let's go ahead and get started with questions. If you have a question for Daisy, go ahead and type it in, and I'll be happy to read it aloud. And in the meantime, we've already got some questions that have been submitted in advance, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we've got a question here from Sue, who says, I'm in my mid-70s. I do an adaptive yoga class two days a week. Uh, would I be able to do Qigong? I have some knee and back issues, but I'm very mobile and active. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, Sue, you can adapt any of this program to your body's capacity. So if there are... Uh, any restrictions in your movement or any discomfort, you can do the whole routine seated. And I always ask that students really pay attention and become sensitive to the needs of their body. So if there's a twinge here or there, listen to what that is saying to you and either reduce the, what we call the dosage or the, either the pacing so slow it down even more, even though Qigong is quite, uh, a, a, we call it the slow motion, uh, slow movement revolution. And so it's often slow enough and uh, in fact easier than most other exercises because it has a, a very gentle continuous flow. So we adapt it to what is happening in our unique bodies. Yeah, so either pace it down or less repetitions and um, do as much as you comfortably can. In Qigong philosophy, we say pain, no gain. And especially when you're starting out in this style of Qigong, it's extremely gentle so that anyone can do it. Any practice can also be adjusted to your needs. Okay, thank you for that question, Sue. All right, well, thank you for that answer, Daisy. Um, we have got a lot of people who are asking about 
healing specific illnesses. Uh, in particular, we're getting a lot of questions about can Qigong help with fibromyalgia? And I want to say right up front that, uh, you know, obviously we can't dispense medical advice. Uh, but Daisy, I wonder if you can address how does Qigong actually help with healing? How does it target certain parts of the body if somebody's got problems with their vision or, as I mentioned, fibromyalgia? How can Qigong actually help with that type of thing? Well, Lisa, the, the incredible opportunity in Qigong is that it's a whole body system. Uh, if you have breath in your lungs and you have even proper posture, let's say you can't, you have limited movement, you can still do Qigong. And so it's a synchronization of three pillars, which is the breath, the direction or the guidance of the mind, and also the proper body posture, if you don't have movement, but you still have proper body posture. The, the flowing of the energy first happens through the, the breath. And so once you learn to gentle, slow down, and deepen the breath, take out any sharpness or raggedness in the breath, automatically the body will, will naturally heal itself. Um, we never diagnose, that's not, that's not what we're trained to do. Um, but what happens with Qigong is that if your, if your breath, your oxygen levels, your lymph uh, is moving and everything is optimized in your, your bodily functions and your organ systems, you are going to have vibrant health. And so that uh, interestingly takes some practice in terms of how do you learn to maximize? What kind of movements actually facilitate unhinging uh, the rusty joints of the body? And so, you know, if, if we don't move, um, and especially in a society that has gotten quite accustomed to be leading a more sedentary life, we will start to um, freeze, like, you know, will cause stagnation in the joints, especially, and in the organ systems. So, when you are, when you're, the, the energy is flowing through the body, you have, uh, where the mind goes, the chi follows. So when something is blocked, whether it's in the emotions or uh, physiologically, biologically, um, or spiritually, it can be any number of categories, uh, or the food that you're eating is, is not being detoxed and the environment is not being detoxed, then that's when poor health can, can manifest. Um, and so when we're taking care of ourselves, properly detoxing and bringing, more, bringing uh, fresh energy and fresh oxygen in and purging what is stagnant in the body and sending the breath to different parts, you can also do that through uh, guidance using the mind then the opportunity is the, for the body to heal itself. And um, just recently, one of, a, one of my students actually brought to my attention a book by Dr. Wayne Jonas. Um, he had been in the research field, uh, medical research for over 40 years. And very interesting conclusion that he came to after working with all these very famous medical facilities and uh, you know, NIH, National Institute of Health, was that 80% of healing is not to do with the modality per se. It arises from outside the doctor's office. And so that, from the little bit that I've read at this time, it has a lot to do with what you believe your capacity for healing is. Now, the Western medical establishment might call that a placebo. And, uh, you know, Lisa, I feel one of the worst things that uh, any medical professional or even alternative professional can do is to take away the confidence of, uh, of a patient or a person. And when they lose that confidence in themselves, they start to get depressed or anxious. The energy, in, in the, uh, according to Qigong, the energy will drop and will start to get heavy and dense. Uh, and they'll either want to fly away out of their body 
or they just get so down that energetically they start to lose hope. And so uh, to me, there's, you know, there's this ex expression, false hope. But what is false hope? Uh, hope is hope. And when, when your body is infused with that intention, it's very much like uh, Dr. Matsuru Emoto's work. He did the Hidden Messages in Water, really wonderful book. Um, a very interesting human being that I had the opportunity to meet on Kauai when I was living there. And, um, you know, the, the messages that we carry are a belief system about our abilities, whether to heal or to extend healing to others, makes a world of difference. And that's the 80%. So 80% is an incredible amount. Uh, incredible percentage to consider that um, when you marry a system that has movement, but very gentle movement with breath, with rebalancing the emotional state and the mind, you have a system that is really tailor-made for almost anyone, really. So whether someone is bedridden uh, and has limitations in terms of their movement, uh, or wheelchair bound, uh, both of, you know, people I've taught, um, or they're active like martial artists and Olympic athletes also whom I've taught, that when it doesn't matter what extreme these people come from, what, what Qigong does is it recalibrates everything, it brings everything back to center. So the heart, the mind, the emotions, the, the spirit of a person comes into a balanced, harmonious state. And that is the, one of the keys, at least, to healing, is creating that harmonious balance within the body so that the chi or the energy can flow through smoothly. Yeah, so that's why I say uh, it's very important for both medical professionals in the Western allopathic field, as well as uh, Chinese or Ayurvedic or homeopathic, um, any type of healing, it doesn't actually matter which one. The, the great thing about Qigong is that anyone can do it. And so uh, from the youngest ages that I've taught around the five-year-old uh, little kids to uh, seniors, elders, the wisdom keepers who are over a hundred, these people, anyone that's, you know, essentially, you know, become very consciously aware or is beginning on that path, they have the opportunity to do Qigong. And um, it doesn't require apparatus, doesn't require anything special, but your attentiveness and some degree of commitment and dedication. Uh, so this is why, you know, Qigong can apply to 80%. And if you really understand that, and commit to some level of practice, even if it's not uh, an hour a day. But if you start slowly and do a few minutes a day, and you start to feel better from those few minutes, you'll be encouraged and you'll want to do more minutes. And before you know it, you might be beyond an hour of practice a day. And it becomes part of your daily life, uh, part of how you, you meet and greet people part of how you wash your dishes or interact with your loved ones uh, or, or someone that you might not particularly love in that moment. But you, the way you see the uh, situation actually changes because you're in balance. And so um, this is what I mean by extending confidence. Um, and also, you know, the, I also read uh, and more than once I've, I've talked about nocebos, and nocebos are a negative placebo that can be implanted very some, uh, quite often unconsciously by a, a medical doctor uh, or even an alternative healer. Uh, and they, you know, by, by planting this negative idea in a person that it's impossible for them to heal. The likelihood or the percentages are so low that just prepare for your death. And I feel that no one can really know that. You know, whether you're, maybe you're in your spirit, but it's an unspoken kind of knowingness. Um, so to take that away from someone before their life is finished on this earth, 
I think it's a great disservice. And so if we have the chance, if we have the opportunity, why not elevate the human experience? Why not inspire someone to whatever time they have left uh, and not to judge what that amount of time is, but to infuse it with light, to infuse it with loving intention, to infuse it with hope, and regardless of the outcome, you know, live the time that they have and the time that you have 100% fully and enjoy as much as you can because, um, and find peace within that time because that's what we have. This is what our, our life is here for, to learn and discover what it means to be human. And sometimes that discovery includes pain. Sometimes that includes suffering. I would say probably almost every time there's going to be some level of that. And uh, just to actually not, not to judge even pain or suffering uh, is probably one of the hardest things that you can do. Um, but I, I think it's, uh, it's worthwhile to look at that and also investigate deeper about what is it that you believe about your own capacity to heal? And how can you infuse yourself with that fresh idea if it has been taken away from you for a while? How do you re-inspire yourself? Start doing a little bit of a Qigong practice. Start changing your diet you know, to uh, not drain your energy and not you know, clog the pipes of the body and uh, you know, inflame the joints of the body. You know, so these are all part of Qigong. This is not just a physical practice, but a mental, emotional, and uh, you know, even evolves into a spiritual practice for those that are very uh, dedicated and desire more from their practice. Often, uh, at least it just happens naturally that it becomes a spiritual sense of, of life, you know, a spiritual understanding of uh, how life can be. And so uh, I know it's a long answer for, <laughs> for what you just shared uh, and what you just asked, but hopefully it gives uh, uh, students an idea of uh, the understanding that I have, at least from the Radiant Lotus Qigong perspective. Right. Well, it was beautifully stated. Thank you so much for that, because it, it was a complicated question, and I appreciate the depth that you gave in the response. Uh, for those of you who are just joining us, we're here with Daisy Lee, learning about her upcoming course called Deepening into the Radiant Lotus Qigong Path for Women, and it begins on Wednesday, January 30th. And you can log on to qigongforwomentraining.com for all the details and to register. So let's get back into questions here. We've got a question here from Fawn who says, how is this course targeted specifically for women? How is it different from Qigong for men? Oh, that's a good question, Vaughn. Uh, and you know, I have to say that uh, a lot of times I've had men interested in learning this course. Uh, of course, you could learn because I do have you know, DVDs that are available and we also have this shift course. Um, but in terms of teaching, t you know, uh, allowing people to teach, I've, I've actually made a conscious effort to work with women, to support women in teaching to other women. Uh, and in empowering, uh, we say, half the sky, um, you know, the women being the earth and the masculine being the sky, but empowering, we are also half the sky. You are also men, part of this earth. And so um, in answer to Vaughn's question specifically, the, what is different about this program is that it addresses a lot of hormonal issues that can arise from our, our different types of bodies. And with the hormone flow being blocked at times, uh, especially you know, the, the liver energy can get inflamed. And when women go into menopause, for instance, um, some, some very uncomfortable things can happen, such as intense heat, uh, it's called hot flashes, um, some discomforts as the body changes. And so these kinds of things, you know, heavy periods, painful periods, lumpy breasts, uh, lump, uh, you know, breasts, lumps, and cysts, and tumors, um, these are often things that men don't have. Uh, 
uh, especially maybe they still can get breast tumors. But um, in terms of the hormonal fluxes that happen every month from having a menstrual cycle and being able to have the capacity to carry life in one's body, that is just a very different physical, biological system. And I know uh, these days there's a lot of, uh, you know, gender mixing. I'm not sure what to actually call it. Um, I don't want to, you know, be at all disrespectful because I don't know the terminology or the languaging for it. Um, but, you know, I have a number of friends that have uh, had sex changes, gender changes, and, you know, they've also asked me, can someone like this practice that is going through this transition, uh, it certainly wouldn't hurt. Um, adjustments can be made, but in my physical classes in person, we usually have women with biological, uh, you know, systems of women. And so uh, when the hormones are flowing smoothly in a woman's body, there, there are, you could say there are less spikes. So if there's something that's happening, the emotions rise up because the liver heat is pushing, uh, pushing up and the face gets flushed and the heart's racing. Uh, you know, that maintaining that, or you know, being in that state constantly is not going to be healthy. And uh, you might blow up because you need to let off some steam. And why not use Qigong to actually get yourself into balance before something explosive happens. Uh, recently, a, a friend and colleague of mine was talking about, uh, it was actually a, apparently a man that wrote something about, um, you know, women's emotions are to be honored. If she's firing up and, and uh, nagging, you know, she's just an oracle. <laughs> and I thought, I don't think you can just call yourself an oracle because, you know, you're, your emotions are out of control. Um, and it's not about squelching your energy and, and uh, controlling yourself in a, in a very tight way, but it's actually management skills so that your body and your mind, your emotions can find peace. And when you're in peace, the healing capacity is that much greater because there's no blockage for the energy to stop. The, the organs are functioning well, the blood is moving smoothly, the chi is moving smoothly, the energy is moving s smoothly through the body. And so you're not, you're not uh, blocked in any part of the body. Uh, and so there has to be that understanding that, uh, you know, qigong, we create a space when we play qigong, we call it playing qigong, um, because work is too hard. <laughs> And, and uh, you know, there's, everything is being worked at, but, but we need to play a little more and bring lightness into the body. And that's probably why when, when, when you're laughing and smiling about something that the energy is moving through and the endorphins and, and uh, the, the good hormones are moving through and, you know, supporting you in that healing process. And so... Um, you know, so Vaughn, that's, that's what I can share with you that men can do, like, for example, the, especially the movements that I, I use to help us process emotions and histories, her stories, histories and her stories. <laughs> it's used to also process this. It's like a story unfolding, uh, retrieving lost information that is useful and, and supportive of your healing and your evolution, your wisdom, but also letting go of what, you know, uh, stagnates you, letting go and learning how to release those old patterns that have kept you in a, a lockdown. And so some of these movements can be used and have been taught to men as well, um, such as showering chi, Flying Phoenix and the Lotus Rises movement, the, the opening movement that I just did, those are all really beautiful movements for both men and women. Uh, some of the more specific work that we do for um, supporting breast health, uh, 
men don't usually have a lot of fatty tissue here. Um, and so it's not, it may help you because Tarzan was beating his chest and I'm sure that not only was he uh, increasing his immune system and the T cells, the immune cells that uh, come from the thymus gland, but it's different for women because of the, the globes of the breasts. There's a lot of um, stagnation that can happen, especially emotionally. Some of that stagnation for women especially gets contained in the breast tissue or in the uterus. And so these two key areas are uh, a focus in Radiant Lotus Women's Qigong. We help to discharge it. We work on the whole body, play. <laughs> we play Qigong and the whole body is uh, taken care of. And so, uh, but we have a little extra attention in these two sectors of the body, the middle Dantian and the lower Dantian. It doesn't mean that we negate the mind, uh, we guide the mind into balance because when the mind is crazy making and uh, they, you know, highly emotional to the point of distraction for yourself, first of all, stop and examine what is really happening. Uh, look and listen uh, rather than speak, as I sometimes say. We have two eyes and two ears and only one mouth for a reason. And so, you know, to do our best to tune in with our senses and um, not let the crazy mind escape us. So Qigong is also a way to help train the mind and uh, bring balance back also into the mind. So all three Dantians and with women even more uh, especially the, the Dantian that's not mentioned is the throat Dantian. Yeah, and that's because possibly, um, it, this is my conjecture that uh, throughout history, women's voices have been suppressed. And I know uh, if you're an empathetic person, regardless of whether male or female, um, and you've seen and been around in this world long enough, you will see many instances of that. It's in our history. And so we don't need to uh, fight to be heard. You know, sometimes when you fight to be heard, you're not, you're not necessarily uh, creating balance in the world. Uh, it doesn't mean that I believe you should just take it sitting down. But what opportunity you have in this practice, especially through the Tibetan sound healing, this, the six sounds that you're going to learn um, in this practice in the, in the middle modules of this program, it helps you to access your uh, authentic voice, a voice that can be heard because you're speaking from your heart and not just your mind, not just your emotions, uh, not just your suffering. Yeah, so you're speaking from a different place when you are able to access and open up this throat center. And that's why it's very significant that in Radiant Lotus Women's Qigong, we, we actually do exercise the, the voice and uh, allow truth to be spoken uh, respectfully, uh, as graciously and gracefully as we can. Um, and when there is a time that you need to bring out the thunder in your voice and allow the thunder and lightning to come forth, um, it, it will be very precise. It will not uh, hurt because truth, truth has been spoken. It will be recognized. So recognized as opposed to being attacked. And even then you don't know, you can't say how someone will receive it. Uh, it's not up to you. What is up to you is how you discover your authentic voice and how you speak it and use this voice because this is a gift. In Hawaiian culture, I lived on Kauai for 14 years. Uh, in Hawaiian culture, the greatest gift is to use your voice in song, uh, in honoring of life. And so uh, this is you know, some of the things that you'll be learning and I'll be sharing through this program. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa.
All right. Thank you. Uh, we do have time for a few more questions, but before we take those, I want to give a few details about the course. People are asking questions about that, so it's a good time to go ahead and go into that. Uh, again, the course is called Deepening into the Radiant Lotus Qigong Path for Women, and this is going to be just a, a fantastic nine-week journey uh, under Daisy's guidance where you'll discover how to integrate practices into your daily life to dissolve stress, clear energy blocks, and align with your own wisdom and grace. The nine-week course takes place on Wednesdays at noon Pacific, starting Wednesday, January 30th. And if you can't join us live, that's fine. You will not miss the teachings. You'll receive audio and video recordings, transcripts, and all course handouts on your course homepage. Also, I'd like to remind you that we offer a no-risk money-back guarantee on all of our courses, giving you a full two weeks until February 13th in this case to make sure that you absolutely love it. As an added option, all participants are welcome to connect in a private Facebook community group so you can stay connected with one another. Also, everyone who registers receives the Deepening into the Radiant Lotus Qigong Path for Women bonus collection. First, you'll receive the full package of downloadable videos and transcripts for all sessions of the Qigong Global Summit, which is valued at $247. Uh, then you'll get an interview dialogue with Daisy and Mark Rule entitled The Qigong Path. And when you register by Midnight Pacific on Friday, January 25th, you'll receive this additional bonus gift, and that is an audio dialogue with Ming Tongu and Dr. Robin Benson entitled, Unlock the Secret to Your Health and Healing Through Qigong. So Daisy, before we get back into Q&A, what are you most looking forward to sharing in your upcoming course? Oh my goodness, that, <laughs> I can't say that it's any one specific thing, but I, I have to say that I love connecting with the students. Um, this is one of the, the most amazing things to me. Uh, initially, I thought technology would be distancing, and quite ironically, it's the technology that has brought me closer to my students. And uh, maybe because cameras can go close up and you, know, you can get a uh, visual reinforcement by, you know, uh, with the camera and with communication. Um, you know, I guess what, what we saw on Star Trek isn't so far away now. So I, I find it really um, kind of amusing that this very ancient system that's estimated to be about 5,000 years old is interfacing through this new technology at Shift and, uh, and through Zoom. So I, I love that. I sincerely just love being connected to the students. So that's, uh, and teaching them how to be empowered in their self-care. That's the primary motive of this program. And uh, I look forward to seeing everyone and having, having you join and become healthier and healthier and more radiant. <laughs> so thank you for that. All right, thank you. I've got a question here from Kristen who's asking, is the middle dantian at the thymus point or heart? It's actually, you know, it's between the breasts. So, uh, of course, depending on how low your breasts hang. <laughs> but usually, if your, your, your you know, breasts were uplifted, it would be across there. And it's, it's a little lower than the thymus gland, you could say. And so that location, it's a center, so it's not a specific point. Uh, but between the breasts where the nipples, you know, would come inwards is that point, is that area. Yeah, so that's the middle dantian. It's the center of love and compassion and, of course, our, our emotions. All right. Thank you for that. Uh, Linda wants to know, would you guide me to methods for dealing with overwhelming stress from outside interference? Ah, oh, well, <laughs> this practice will definitely, I think, do that. Certainly the, the students that have taken us, um, have taken the first course, they were already feeling and finding that sometimes from the very first module. Um, so if there is an outside influence, one thing to know is that we may or may not be able to change that outside influence. So the only thing we can do is focus on what we can do within ourselves. So you don't have to dumb down or numb down what is happening, but if you can see it as 
that other person, as far as they know, are doing the best you can. If they can't change and you can't influence that change, then all that's left is your perspective and what you can do for yourself. So one of the things that we'll be doing very early on, uh, in fact, in the, the first, uh, first module, is the movements such as showering chi to help decompress and lower the stress, and also the balancing movement that brings equilibrium back into the heart-mind. And so when both those movements are, are practiced, you will have a, a pretty solid, we, we practice it not only on the first module, but I'm going to, uh, every week we're going to go deeper and continue one or two movements from that initial practice in, and carry it through each module so that you get enough practice and get to know those movements so well that it becomes almost second nature by the end of it. Yeah, and so showering chi movement, the flying phoenix balancing movement, and uh, further the lotus rises movement, all in the first module. And the last part is the lotus rises is an opening into potential and releasing the stress, reconnecting with the earth and sky to bring balance back into the body because if you're always referencing outside in terms of another person's confrontational emotion, then you're going to be echoing sometimes that. So if you rely on that as your stability, you will be easily destabilized. And so that's why we always go into vertical alignment from the very beginning and at the end, because the earth is always below us and we can connect to her and the sky is always above. And so we have that representation of the soul star that's uh, coming out through the byway point high into the sky, into the stars, representing our highest self. So you would ask yourself, well, how would myself in my most evolved state manage this? Not control it, because you can't control, but how would you manage it best? And the answer may or may not come immediately, but continue doing the practice. And sometimes what happens is that through practice and the quietness, you get to hear new answers that come through. So that would be my advice uh, to Linda okay. and all of us. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thanks. Uh, we've got kind of a similar question here. This is anonymous, uh, and it's referring to the conversation that you had with Stephen Dine in the, the, your intro conversation. Um, it says, thanks for the tips about staying well during wintertime. I'm passing them on to my seniors. Apparently this person works with seniors. Uh, they often ask me for advice about sleep, either falling asleep or going back to sleep after waking up at night. Please help. Okay, well, one of, the, one of the pressure points that is on the bottom of the feet is called the kidney one or the bubbling spring. Uh, it's between the two balls of the feet and I go through that in the course as well. But you can gently rub that point, just stack your two thumbs, uh, you know, put your foot up and find, locate that point. Uh, you can even find it on the acupuncture charts if you look online and you gently massage, uh, gently press in and exhale when you press in and slowly lift off as you inhale. And so it almost becomes, not only, not only are you breathing slowly and deeply and gently through your nose or mouth, but you're also breathing in through that bottom point at the bottom of the feet. And that just kind of helps to release and relax tension in the body. You don't want to squeeze it really hard, but it's just a very gentle compression. And then you slowly lift the thumbs off and release. Yeah. And so that is a, a simple thing that can be done. But again, showering chi is often used for sleep issues. And uh, do we have time, uh, Lisa, for me to briefly show that movement sure. so that uh, if she's seeing this, she can actually do it. Uh, it is, again, a ball of light between the two palms. And we open this light. And if you're trying to work on sleep, then rise the cooling energy 
from the earth, the nurturing energy, and then turn at the shoulder height. Relax the wrists. The fingers are still alert. Inhale the night sky. And so you surround yourself with this light, ball of light, and descend it, and the knees gently sink a little bit at the same time as the hands. Okay, so slowly exhaling down and coming back to this ball. I'm going to do it just one more time, if that's okay. And sink the knees. Inhale, gentle, sleepy energy from the earth. Turn at the shoulder height. Exhale. Inhale, the knees straighten gently. The palms face overhead. And now imagine night sky descending, starlight descending through the body, down through the midline, out through the earth, releasing the stress from the body and having it recycled at the earth's core. Then you can crisscross and come back to the Dantian. Close the legs. Yeah. Okay. And that is the, hopefully, a, a simple enough movement that you can practice that and do that one movement. So the, the arms move in tandem with the body rising up. And then we change. And so the slowing down of the breath actually slows the mental activity as well. And uh, so you won't be, you won't be, you know, thinking this. And, and if you do, if you ha have a tendency to have a very busy mind, remember to focus on the breath, slowing the breath down and just observing how, where the mind goes, but keep slowing and focusing on the breath. And if you do it with movement, it actually adds another layer, a physical layer, and this movement going through the midline actually decompresses energy that is pressing upwards. And that's why this uh, very simple movement, the showering chi, is actually so beneficial on so many levels for so many people. Yeah, hope that helps. <laughs> I think so. Thank you. <laughs> Do I put you to sleep, Lisa? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm wide awake and I can't wait until I can actually do that when I'm not sitting in front of my computer with a microphone <laughs> attached to me. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, we've got uh, a grouping of questions that are all in the same sort of realm. So let me just read them and we'll see what we can do with this. Uh, first, we have the question, does your course provide a daily routine? Uh, the second question is, how many times a week do we practice and how long are the routines? And another one is, how to develop a daily practice that I'll stick with? So you see, they're all sort of related. Maybe you can give us one big bundled answer. Okay, <laughs> I hope I can. Um, so in, in response to this, they, we are going to take it through stages. And so we're not going to necessarily do the same thing every every week. Uh, but what we're doing is building practice, pra practice upon practice, so that in the end you have a menu of Qigong exercises or movements that you can pick and choose from. And what you're going to explore each week is what does that do? Which, what did that movement do in my body? It's a very experiential course and that's why uh, even though we're together for that hour and a half every Wednesday. Uh, I, I'm not sure if we mentioned that, uh, Lisa, but it's going to be 12 noon Pacific time. So you have to calibrate and find out what time zone you're in. But um, so each time you're going to learn something new. And sometimes you're, we're going to add back from the first module into the second module. We might reach back in the third module for the Flying Phoenix and bring it forward to uh, the, the third session. And so the, why I want to do, that, do it that way is to give you options. If you are used to uh, a very linear way of thinking, women are actually not that linear per se. Um, directionally, men are straight and women are more rounded. And the, the movements that we do, the way we move, we're often multitasking. And so 
you know, we are given, I am giving you the freedom to choose. If you know of a condition that you're dealing with that this particular movement addresses, then you can pick from that module. You can pick from this one. And so, uh, and the reason being that not every uh, course is going to address everything that you need. What this course will do is, yes, it addresses some specifics. So if you're going to pick and choose, you, don't, you might not have an hour and a half to practice all the time. So choose the 20 minute practice, right? So what has happened is that uh, in the, the pre-recorded pieces, which I'm very excited about because uh, we shot our, our first piece and it looks so beautiful. It's shot in uh, a place called Playuela in Puerto Rico in this incredible, right by the ocean, uh, right by this coconut grove. And uh, we have these incredible shots and beautiful photography, videography by um, Chase Walker, who, who was my videographer. And to, to have this kind of 20-minute um, practice that you can go back to at any time, I think is a great gift. So every week we're going to have a 20-minute practice uh, within the Q&A, uh, within the Dharma talk that we have at the very beginning. And so, you know, at some point, if you feel like, oh, I need something right now, then you take that 20 minute segment, that practice session, and you just go directly to that. If you don't have time for 20 minutes, take one element from that 20. And so the options are very important because um, I think one of the things that stops people, and especially women from practicing, is that they feel like, oh, they have to have one hour of practice in order to have benefit. Uh, it's not true. It's ideal if you have the time to use that time wisely and well uh, and to do a practice that brings peace to the body so that harmonious flow can happen. But um, failing that hour, then create that, you know, find where your, your time is. Is it when you get up or are you better at the end of the night when all the children are asleep? Are you better at breaking up your day? And uh, I've heard actually really funny, um, women sometimes they're under stress at work and they'll just go into the bathroom and take the showering movement or the balancing movement or the lotus rises movement and they'll do it in their bathroom, bathroom cubicle before coming back and it's like, okay, now I'm ready. <laughs> ready to face whatever I, I have to confront with my colleague or my boss. And uh, it's been quite effective. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I just laugh at the environment because, you know, it's, it's maybe a little bit smelly in there. <laughs> so, yeah, that, um, I'm, I'm not quite sure if I've fully answered all the questions within that, that, uh, that yeah. one section. I think so. And in fact, it uh, leads to yet another question on a similar topic. Barbara's one is to know, how much time do we have to dedicate to Qigong before we actually see a difference in our energy? Ah, well, that is very unique to each person. And I, that is really only a question that you can answer. But I can say that from all the women that have been participating and writing me back, uh, several, you know, out of over 500 uh, in that first series, so many people wrote and said that they could feel so much changing even from the first time. And so if you're uh, fortunate that way and you actually feel the benefit from the very get-go that's fantastic and congratulations and if you require more time don't judge yourself harshly you know just know that uh, there might have been things going on in your life that are more intense and so it re requires more time to unwind and un um, undo some of that um, trauma or, or drama, you know, that's happened in your life and in your body. Our body reflects what has happened and, uh, and actually also how you manage what has happened. Yeah. And so, you know, to forgive yourself for not having the benefits like some of the people that have uh, received, you know, more immediately, I think it's very important to also be gentle on yourself. 
Okay, beautiful. Thank you. Uh, let's see. What else do we have here? We've got quite a few questions. I want to make sure we get something that a lot of people are asking. Um, let's see. Uh, actually, th this is one that's coming in a few times. People are asking about varicose veins. And I know we discussed about not giving uh, medical advice, but could you address that? <laughs> Uh, varicose veins, you know, those are the small cap capillaries, or some people say capillaries, depending on their, whether they're from Canada or U.S. Um, that, you know, those can happen if you don't get enough uh, antioxidants like the, the dark berries. Uh, that, those kinds of foods can actually help and, with the small veins. And so if you can get uh, a hold of uh, organic berries. Sometimes if you can't get it in season, going into the frozen section is also not a bad idea. And getting uh, organic frozen blueberries or strawberries, cherries, um, those, that kind of food can actually, fruit especially, can be very helpful. Um, on the subject, I, I know I'm diverting a little bit, but if you're going to eat fruit, which is a very good idea, um, it is best eaten on an empty stomach, yeah? So not after, because if you put fruit, uh, an acid on top of starch, you're going to get a lot of gas and bubbling and discomfort, and you're going to create uh, a lot more fermentation in your intestines, and that is the cause of uh, a great deal of ill health. So if, if you do eat fruit, it's ideally eaten by itself on an empty stomach, um, and especially the melons, but really any fruit. Uh, better to either eat it first or eat it uh, on an empty stomach. And, and then your health will probably also improve from just such a small thing as that. Yeah. Wow. Well, thank you for that little bonus tidbit. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank You're you. welcome. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, looking at the time here, it looks like we're just about out of time here. Uh, let's try to squeeze in one last one, just because we started a little late. Um, there's people asking about, <coughs> excuse me, about uh, doing qigong with with children. Is this something that uh, that parents can teach their kids? Will it be beneficial for kids? Oh, it would definitely be beneficial for kids. I, I've taught, uh, I love teaching kids, and I've often, when I, I used to be on Kauai, I taught at a middle school, I had special programs for the kids there. Uh, some of it, uh, very surprising to me was, uh, especially the t not maybe so surprising when you consider the age, but the teenagers, um, including the boys, they were really interested in Qigong for weight loss. And um, I guess, you know, the, the diet at home hadn't been so great and they were starting to really lose their self-esteem. And so I was teaching them special programs like that. Uh, I was teaching them certain exercises to show because they really like demonstrations uh, of how something works and why it works. And so I would bring like bottles of water, I would bring uh, some chocolate bars, and uh, I made a home homemade healthy dessert one time. And I said, okay, if we do an energy test on this and you test positive, you can take it home. You can have the junk, junk food. If your body can tolerate it, you can have it. And out of a full classroom of kids, only one boy uh, actually was able to have a chocolate bar. <laughs> All the rest were like, they were falling like flies. Uh, so they got the water. <laughs> they were very surprised um, by, by that test result. And uh, so I like to do fun experiments with the kids. I imagine adults also like fun experiments, <laughs> but this one was um, particularly fun because they, they got to see you know, how how uh, they were their own science project. <laughs> so you can teach kids Qigong. Um, just don't be, you know, uh, impose it on them if they're not interested. You know, find out if they're interested. A lot of times what I find, um, especially with little ones, uh, my, my twin nieces have had this happen where um, their, their grandmother was doing some of the Qigong that I taught her, and they started just following her and they, they got on tape for me because they were so excited that here was my uh, two-year-old nieces starting to do Qigong already. And so you can teach it. Uh, you know, as I said, just don't be pushy about teaching it. Just show them first. They might be curious. 
And then if they're curious and they start, then you just naturally, they will follow you, follow you naturally because first of all, they might see, oh, she looks like she's having fun and she's, you know, not being hard on me and not telling me what not to do. She's like actually enjoying herself. And so that's a, a much better attractant <laughs> for Qigong than making any child do something that they're not ready for. <laughs> All right. Great. Good advice. Well, this is, as usual, just been a, a delightful hour. Uh, I want to thank our viewers for being with us today and for all of your questions. Once again, Deepening into the Radiant Lotus Qigong Path for Women starts Wednesday, January 30th, and you can visit qigongforwomentraining.com. I'll spell that again. It's Q-I-G-O-N-G for womentraining.com. And that's where you can learn more and register. So before we cut you loose, Daisy, do you have any final words for our viewers? Uh, Lisa, just thank you so much for your presence in this hour and uh, for the very interesting questions. And, uh, and it's always a great pleasure to see you too, Lisa. You, you have that uh, halo around your head. You look like uh, an angel, <laughs> an angel in our midst. So thank you also for all your support. All right. And, <laughs> an earth angel, as it were. <laughs> yeah, thank you again, Daisy. It's just been a, a pleasure speaking with you today. And again, thank you to everyone who joined us. And I wish you well and look forward to having you on this course or perhaps another one in the future. Have a great day, everyone.